talking about annoying um people online the other part of it has been super annoying and something that i've kind of been trying to wrangle in my head doesn't i still haven't worked it out there's this, this there's a weird prevalence of these djs especially the more these that you would imagine are in the sort of the higher bracket in sort of like dj fee because it's hard to judge right djs in general from what i've seen and from what i know being from being a fan of the music and djing myself and going to all these different clubs and festivals it's very difficult to say that you know a a dj is in a certain tier because sometimes it's not about skill a lot of it it's not about taste it's not about i don't know whatever it, it doesn't come down to those kind of artistic uh measurements right it's usually sometimes down to about appeal branding marketing all these sort of other things that don't really have to do with the act of actually djing and enjoying music or that sort of good stuff make people dance so if somebody's in the top tier of a djing category uh, top tier in terms of like dj fees it doesn't necessarily equate that that person is also the best like for instance in football Lionel messi Cristiano Ronaldo, are two of the highest paid footballers in the world that it's easier to deduce from that if you go down a list of like the players you know in descending order more than likely they'll also be kind of ranked in terms of their ability to play football but in arts and entertainment it's not necessarily the same thing sometimes the people that make the most money are usually the shittest right usually the most horriblest people they put out the crappiest work it doesn't really matter um it's died you know it's instagrammable microwavable bullshit and i think djing is sort of in the same realm but it can be difficult because for the most part it's quite hard to just go from like zero to top tier you have to have some level of talent ability craft skill um obviously you may be you know your marketing team exploits it somewhat you may be able to kind of hack the algorithm but you have to start with something you can't just come in you know with nothing and sort of make it from the top to the bottom it doesn't work that way oh you can but it doesn't it's not a sustained career so when i look at somebody like a nastia who's you know a fairly well established dj in, you know from ukraine i'm pretty sure um who's kind of a part of the sort of group of the sort of like sexy hot girls and techno at the moment you know the what, there's a few others i won't be able to mention their names but in terms of skill and bits of dj she's pretty good so there's no problem that but she's also one of the people that are on the top band of dj so people that you would assume get paid the highest whenever they go and playing and in a normal year she's probably going to be playing plus 100 gigs per year right traveling all over the world playing at some of the biggest stages biggest festivals biggest clubs doing the big 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 thing collecting checks as she kind of goes along um you know living fast doing her thing and enjoying so it's always so it's been very interesting and very bizarre to witness throughout this entire log for our entire covid ordeal the people that occupy the highest echelons in terms of djing fee are also the ones that are most susceptible to break kind of convention go and fly to a different country to go and play usually in a third world country um and to, in order to go and collect a check right that's basically what they're going to do it's not again it's not a bad thing i'm sort of someone judging what you're going to do but it does seem odd in it it does seem bizarre i, I remember i mentioned in the previous podcast that it did seem like there was a little bit of a collective silence and hypocrisy attached to the djs that played in a new year's eve party in ukraine recently because a lot of those djs were sort of people that you would imagine are in the sort of middle to lower middle um tier in terms of djing fees so a lot of those people would probably need the money more so than somebody that can that shit you would assume again i don't know about people's bills but you'd assume the fact um so i think that a lot of the people in the scene sort of like you know Know, um collectively decided to ignore who was on the playing on the list and didn't chastise them too much and obviously the people on the list apart from blauan kept it quiet didn't mention anything um on the feed and people just sort of kind of let them go on but nastya put this really tone deaf post out on the instagram page essentially celebrating the fact that she's traveling from ukraine all the way to colombia to go play a gig in a country where the covid numbers are astronomical and the country where most likely than not the local government is you know i won't say purposely uh not taking COVID seriously but they're not addressing it in, in a way that you probably should be addressing it um due to whatever they're going through over there but it really should be up to the person that has more information the person that obviously has more means to maybe you know um reject that offer maybe 
pass the offer on to maybe a local person that can play that lives within the neighboring countries of Colombia so that you're limiting the amount of spread or what you're contributing to the rising cases you'd imagine so right but it doesn't happen and again why would you post this on your page as well that's the other question too on it but anyway this is Nasha's page and she obviously accompanies it with a complete photo shoot of me 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 so there's loads of such um narcissistic qualities attached to that as well you know another reminder here's my pretty face here's my me, me looking but it continues here's a post says she has the following how are the first days of 2021 so far mine are very intense and interesting and she does she's she's got a tendency to you know um overshare on social anyway i think even before lockdown she's an annoying follower that's why i kind of stopped following her she's always sort of like pouring her heart out about how badly she played a set and how inadequate she feels me 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 so it can get a bit me me but let's continue <clears throat> how are your first days of 2021 so far she says uh, mine are very intense and interesting now packing my bags to fly to colombia and then ecuador tomorrow will be my first flight since march again people do this in the summer when all the little summer covid raves are happening and it was annoying and you know, my first flight since june my first flight since it's like shut the fuck up right? no one is flying for the most part it's a privilege that you're able to play music in front of a crowd and get paid whatever you get paid you're usually flying to a location where it shouldn't be open to tourists it is open the moment you leave you know the numbers completely spike so you're probably killing a lot more people than you actually realize it continues she says i'm nervous and excited feeling like the travel for the first time in my life i travel to mix gigs and holidays good to know for two weeks three weekends i will be playing in bogota medellin cali and uh, cali in colombia and then the lost beach festival or lost beach club in montana ecuador in between i'll visit one of my favorite cities in the world Cartagena. it'll be my third time going there and every time i go last time i want to take I want to take maximum from it. Honestly, I don't believe it. It's real. I miss you so much. Feeling lucky. Pictures made by Karma 2021 trip. And it's such a tone deaf post. It's such an idiotic post. Like it's infuriating. Like, and, and then you think to yourself, right? Oh, it's not that big of a deal. I guess, you know, why do you give a shit? Look at the numbers. Look, this is the page, right? Look at the numbers here. You have total cases, 1.7 million. Uh, deaths, 44,000. And supposedly they're already thinking about going into a lockdown, right? I think I've got the article here. Colombia, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So here's the article here. It says the following. Um, no, thanks. Colombia brings back lockdown as coronavirus case rises. Uh, it says the following. Uh, as the holiday season winds down, Colombia is experiencing a sharp rise in coronavirus infections that has prompted several cities to impose curfews and stay-at-home measures that had not been implemented for months. In the capital of Bogota, where she's flipping going, the absolute donut, the local government locked down three districts that have a population of 2.5 million people, ordering all these businesses, except for the supermarkets and pharmacies, in what part of the city to close. In Medellin, Colombia's second Second largest cities authorities announce a curfew that will last from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. every day until next week. Nighttime curfews have also been adopted in the city of Cali, which is growing as well, and in sometimes uh, sometimes along Colombia's Caribbean coast, where thousands of tourists are still spending their holidays. Officials said the measures are being taken to control the growing number of infections and stabilize hospital rates. Are you insane? And then here she is posting a, a sort of like glorified travel flex image of her going to Hawaii and going to fly somewhere and it made me think right why, why all these people do this because a lot of the responses have been pretty negative as you probably would assume um yeah congrats they're traveling uh, uh we're saying oh i hope you have a lovely time only 1.7 million cases of uh, heart that of course practically nothing almost doesn't exist Colombia's waiting um so there's been some negative response i think she might have deleted a few of the comments as well which you know is probably smart in her regards um, superstar DJs traveling the world and actually accepting gigs during a current crisis makes me want to puke of course I definitely agree with that and it got me thinking why do these people do this especially forget forget accepting a gig we know why they accept it because they need the money right even if they're the most highest paid DJs it seems like they live fast they die they they, they earn their money fast and they burn for it fast for the most part you'd imagine so right because if you're looking at her pockets which I don't really want to do but you'd imagine she gets paid anywhere between 5,000 euros to 30,000 euros per gig right and if you imagine all the other gigs she's played prior to this you'd imagine somebody would have a pretty decent savings off the back of that but probably not you know expenses come out you know you, you if you earn a lot of money you probably your cost of living per month is high too who cares but it got me thinking why are they posting these things online part of my thinking is that a lot of these people especially some of these djs that op occupy the sort of higher echelons 
the sort of like higher tier band in terms of DJing fees. A lot of them do it more so for the gram or more so for social media. They do the actual craft of being a DJ. They enjoy the fact that they're kind of essentially like glorified influencers that happen to also DJ. Because if you're an influencer, part of the reason to be an influencer is to show what you're doing and sort of share your journey, recommendations, the stuff you're into, the stuff you're thinking about. It's sort of like, you know, it's about you. It's sort of like encom all encompassing of your world. So I think when you're a sort of like influencer DJ person, um, you want to always be playing at the most amazing locations so you can keep your feed updated of images of you playing all these lovely locations because if you go through Nasha's page it's just a whole grid full of selfies right of her playing places looking cute spinning in a place holding her hands up in the air going through records it's a sort of typical you know corny um, manufactured you know Instagram ready Instagram approved sort of content that you would expect so it's, so it shouldn't be a surprise that even during a global pandemic where people are losing their jobs people are dying left and right and center no one's had the ability to go out and do anything like again i'm at the, I'm at the lower level of a dj um and i haven't played a gig prop a proper one where i've been paid since what february J january was my last place i basically got to play everyone's suffering in some way some regard but you're saying to yourself hey I'm sacrificing whatever I'm doing like everyone else is in the hopes that if we all kind of band together and sort of like um, do what we can in our part, we can hopefully combat this disease, make sure everyone's safe, make sure we don't have any unnecessary deaths, people get vaccinated and then the world can reopen up again and we can get back on the dance floor. Everybody can do this and everyone could do it with a clean mind. No one needs to feel guilty. No one needs to have, you know, bad vibes being sent to them on the internet. It's just an easy thing to just continue on. So sometimes I think a lot of these people, they're just doing it only for the gram and only for that kind of weird validation. Whereas it's like, if she go, if she played it in, in Columbia and she didn't post it on Instagram, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't be as um, impactful. It wouldn't be as important. It wouldn't actually be something that she'd even appreciate. She has to be able to share it with you, and uh, and for the for the for good or what for the good and for the worse. And um, that's the position that basically at the moment. But like I said, man, it's just it's so annoying to see. You know what I mean? It's just annoying. Like I said, off the back of seeing the influencers posting all their shit and deciding to break COVID rules, people setting up these illegal parties are doing more damage than good. It's just frustrating because this is just inevitably adding more time to us kind of like being locked in place and not be able to do what we know and love. And it's just frustrating that these people don't see anywhere past themselves. They're so selfish, they're so self-centered, self-self-absorbed um, that it just beggars belief really. And this is probably a better example of it, right? She's announced and she's going to go play in all these amazing locations and here's three images of me 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 like okay like we don't know what you look like like bloody hell man absolute wallad but yeah i guess maybe i'm in the maybe i'm just overreacting in this regard but it really does put a beam my bonnet man especially yeah i don't know but yeah let me know in the comments, man. Do you, do you think I'm overreacting? Um, do you get annoyed when you see some of these, um, you know, high paid DJs flying to third world countries, um, second world countries to go and play um, in places like they probably should have no business being in against lives in fucking Ukraine? She's, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Or do you think, you know, it's a capitalist world. She has her bills to pay. She needs to get her money. And it is what it is. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions regarding it.